What's up guys, Grim here, and this is the one, two, three, four, fifth Dream Soul bundle giveaway that we're doing. And this is from the people that went to my Facebook page, clicked on the like button, and left a comment in the post about the giveaway. And the winner of that giveaway is... Congratulations. You are the proud new owner of a Dream Soul Bundle. Now just a warning guys, if we try to give you the Dream Soul Bundle and it will not let us because you already have it, we have to do another giveaway. We have to determine a new winner and all of that. So yeah, don't enter if you've already got it because we'll have to move on to another winner. The reason why I say all this is because we both we already had one person that already had the bundle and they told us to do the uh, give it to somebody else and that's why we're going on to this giveaway that we just did on the Facebook but now we've had a second person that already had the dream soul bundle and we try to give it to them but they already have it so what's that mean it means we're doing another giveaway that's right guys leave a comment in the comment section below with your name and server name that way we can get a winner from for this sixth drawing six dream soul bundle giveaways yes this is the sixth giveaway that we're doing leave your name and server in the dis in the comment section below is so that we can pick you as a winner you yes you you lucky dog you this whole giveaway stuff is really popular. We might have to do a giveaway every weekend. Good luck, guys. What's up, guys? Grim here. Nah, I'm not really hanging upside down. I just wanted a different kind of intro. What's going on, guys? This is Grim. Uh, we're going to go into the Paragon build today. And, of course, this is the Saturday special video. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do a build video. And this is an, an amazing single target, bursty warrior spec that you guys are going to love if you're PvPers. Most likely you are PvPers or you wouldn't be watching my videos, most likely. So, uh, let's go right into it. And I'll have to do a lot of explanation as I'm going along because there are many things that are variables. So I have to explain why I chose what I chose. All right, at first glance here, this looks like the PvE version of this build. But in all reality, it works very, very well in PvP as well. Uh, most people will go 51 into Paragon and then like 25 into Warlord. Most of the builds are going that way. And if you look at like Harry's Lord of War 2.0, that's what he did. And I noticed that a lot of other people are also going that route, such as Naked Stone that did really well at the Godlike Arena tournaments. And a lot of people are just going that route and if you want to see any of those builds just look in the description below i'll link to harry's build and also viral did a video about uh naked stones build now they're both pretty much the exact same uh paragon builds but they did do their macros different so you know pick whichever one you like and if you want to go that route but this is my route here all right so we got 10 points into champion, which is 5 into take no prisoners. And what this does is your damaging abilities that consume attack points deal an additional 10% damage, which is pretty awesome. Your finishers, all that stuff is going to hit 10% harder. And you'll see why adding damage to those finishers is going to be really big whenever I explain the macros. But uh, this also may work with shifting blades, I, I think. I'm not sure. But if it does, yeah, 10% extra damage onto your Shifting Blades Burst macro, dude. All right. A lot of people will, uh, instead of putting points into Take No Prisoners, they'll put into Titan Strength, which if you put five points into it, it'll add 10% to your strength, which is pretty big. Strength is very important for warriors, so choose whichever one you like. 
Uh, on the next tier up, I put five points into Deadly Strikes, which your attacks ignore 10% of the target's armor and resist. It makes me cut through these guys a lot easier, and the armor isn't going to weigh back all of these abilities from hitting them. Um, now here's another uh, explanation point. A lot of times, the uh, whenever people run Paragon builds, they run an ability called Turn the Blade. And it's a toggled buff, so you can turn it on and off. And what, uh, what Turn the Blade does is it reduces the duration of the global cooldown by 0.5 seconds, which will make all your abilities fire off faster, you know. And reduces the power cost of abilities by 33%. Now, as most of you know, whenever you run a warrior, you're just doing really good damage. You're just, uh, everything is going good for a warrior. You're just bursty. You're, you're a nightmare for everybody. The reason that we are not just absolutely killing everybody, though, is because whenever we start firing off all these damaging abilities, we get energy starved. Any good DPS warrior build is going to get energy starved because you're using a lot of abilities all at once to do all this damage. Well, turn the blade makes it to where you're not going to be as energy starved. It basically, you probably won't ever run out of energy because the 33% produ uh, 33 reduction in power cost is huge to put it plainly however there is a downside to turn the blade what it does is it reduces your damage and healing done by 33 percent now that is a big hit in your damage and stuff so the debate comes up do you want to put turn the blade on and swing faster and not run out of energy or do you want to uh, leave it off and do more damage because your damage is going to go up by 33 percent well almost everybody thinks that leave and turn the blade off is the right way to go however if you go into the paragon tree and go up to this passive up here that you put points into called analyze weakness what this does is it makes that that bad part of turn the blade only 20% versus 33% what it was before. So that makes Paragon builds a lot more likely to run with turn the blade on because the, the bad part of it is reduced. So yeah, I run with turn the blade on. So that's how this build is uh, specced around. However, if you decide to not run Turn the Blade, uh, you can uh, put three points into this, uh, this skill over here in Champion called Grim Satisfaction. And what that does is if you put, put the three points into it, it will make your damaging attacks have a 20% chance of recovering eight power. So yeah, it's kind of a smaller chance, so you can still get energy starved with this. But it may keep your energy up enough to where you don't want to run turn the blade. So it's all preference. I'm I didn't spec into Grim Satisfaction because I'm running turn the blade. I don't need the extra power because turn the blade is providing it. Alright, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and go Tempest Soul. We've got five points into Amped. Which, what that does is increases your attack power and weapon damage by 10%. Alright. So, let's go ahead and close that down. Let's go into our macros. And I'm not going to explain all the macros, but I'll explain some of them. Basically, there's your build macro. And if you need to write it down or anything, then you can pause the video and write it down or copy it or whatever. But uh, all the macros will be in the description below. So if you want to see the build or any of the macros, just look in the description below. I'll have it all down there for you guys. All right. Let's go into the finisher right here. All right. This is one I'm going to go ahead and explain. Because Alacrity, which you get at uh, by putting 61 points into Paragon, what that does is it makes your reaping harvest and also like final blessing and rising waterfall which is good too but we're focused on the reaping harvest here that's your finisher so it'll make reaping harvest hit twice 
And it'll also make, of course, Final Blessing and Rising Waterfall hit twice once you cast those. So what we do is we pop Alacrity, and then we pop Combat Focus. What Combat Focus does is it awards you three combo points and also makes your Reaping Harvest hit 50% harder. So, yeah, we got that 10% bonus from uh, combo point uh, consuming abilities from our champion tree. Now we're going to buff it up even more by 50% with combat focus. Pop Alacrity, which is going to make it hit twice. And then we pop our Reaping Harvest for insane damage. Usually you're going to hit somebody for at least 10,000 damage with that. So, yeah. And that's not even your burst macro, guys. Here is your burst. Now this uh, is started off by triggering Shifting Blades. And what Shifting Blades does is it makes your next three attacks uh, hit a second time. And uh, for a percentage of that, you know. It, so it's not hitting for 100% uh, another time. But still, it's hitting really hard. So what you want to do is you want to put abilities after Shifting Blades to be really hard hitting abilities. So this macro pops Shifting Blades. You got to use it with three combo points. And then it'll pop death touch which uses your first combo uh your first charge of shifting blades and uh death touch debuffs the target by like 80 percent of their stats it snares them it, it just it hits really hard too and now it's going to hit a second time because of shifting blades all right then it goes into tranquility tranquility hits really hard as well and does its thing so yeah that's your second charge there all right, now it's time to pop your third charge of Shifting Blades. And what that does, what we have here is Final Blessing and Rising Waterfall. The reason why we have those back to back is that Final Blessing only triggers if your opponent is at 30% health or less. So if they are, it's going to pop Final Blessing and not Rising Waterfall. And Final Blessing, of course, hits harder because it's got that condition on it that they have to be 30% health, health or less. And if they are not under that condition, it will bypass that and just cast Rising Waterfall, which also hits really hard, but not as hard as Final Blessing. And, of course, it will hit a second time. So, all right. Now, let's go into our charge there of course we got thread the trees which is paragon bull rush which is the uh champion charge and then we got uh the ground target uh at area effect thunderous leap and what that is is it's your planar leap so to say uh it comes from the planar attunement so if you don't have that in the planar attunement yet then don't put it in your macro go ahead and cut it out and also, if you're in uh, one of the bomby race, then you can put your Mighty Leap at the beginning of the macro because it needs to be used uh, out of combat, I believe. So, yeah, normally you have to use that before you use the other stuff. So, that's your charge macro. Alright, let's go ahead and go into the buffs. The buffs are Turn the Blade, which uh, I prefer to use. Uh, focus a body, which increased your strength by 70, per, uh, 70 points. Uh, way of the wind, which when hitting an, an enemy with a follow-up attack or reaping harvest, it deals an additional 882 air damage. So that's your rising waterfall, your final blessing, all those follow-up attacks. They're going to trigger that to where it, it deals additional damage. Okay, and then we got Way of the Mountain. I prefer this one because what it does is it makes it to where you can't be knocked back and you take 5% less damage. There are other way buffs that increase your damage, which some people may prefer, but this allows you to where you don't get peeled. Way of the Mountain makes it to where people can't knock you back so they can't get you off of them. You're going to be on them and you're going to be DPSing them like crazy and it's going to be an absolute nightmare for them. All right, then we got Soldier's Bearing, which comes from the Champion Tree, and it increases your damage by 3%. And then Enhanced Conductivity, which for 15 seconds after a successful hit, enemies take an additional 2% damage from the Warrior. As you can see, we're stacking damage. And then you got your Guild and Planar buffs down there. 
All right, now we're going to go into how how to play this build. There are a lot of things that's going to be going on here, but it's still simple to play. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like I don't have the three combo points. I've got them right now, but let's pretend I do not have them. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to pop our finisher right off the bat because what that's going to do is it's going to pop alacrity, okay? which is going to make our reaping harvest hit twice. All right. And then it's going to pop combat focus. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us the three combo points that we pretend we don't have right now. It's going to give us the three combo points and then it's going to make our reaping harvest hit 50% harder. So that's going to be a finisher right off the bat. As soon as you charge in, let's go ahead and target some and let's charge. All right. We're going to hit finisher right off the bat. Boom. As soon as it fires off, you see that back-to-back 10,000 hit. All right. So we've used our finisher, and we've got a lacquer T running. Now we hit our builder, and this is going to fire a lot of our abilities as well as Rising Waterfall and Final Blessing. Now remember, we still got a lacquer T running, so they're going to hit twice each as well as soon as you go to your builder. So that's going to fire all those abilities off. And now we've got three combo points. It's time to go into our burst macro. Now it's going to fire shifting blades, uh, death touch, tranquility, and then another final blessing or rising waterfall, which Alacrity is probably still running at this point. So pop, 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 and it'll do a lot of damage. It'll do even more if I didn't let the Alacrity run out explaining to you guys. So... What you probably want to do, and I'll go ahead and explain my uh, bar down here so you can see what I'm hitting. I got my builder, I got my finisher, uh, the burst macro, I've got flurry, which flurry is like a slice and dice for three seconds and it does a lot of damage. And it also is a ranged attack. You can slice and dice these people from 20 meters away, which is awesome. Uh, I've got Mark of Inevitability, which has no global cooldown, so it's not going to take away from your uh, burst once you use it. And uh, it it what it does is up to 10 nearby enemies lose 3,600 armor for 60 seconds. So it's a huge debuff, guys. Um, and then we got our Charge Macro, and then we got Fleet of Foot which increases movement speed by 50% for 21 seconds. And then up here we've got Flinching Strike, which is our melee range interrupt. Uh, we got Wrist Strike, which is a debilitate for 5 seconds. And then we got Predictable Movements, which is a stun for 4 seconds. Alright, so like I said, we're going to go ahead and charge in. Now we're going to go ahead and hit our Mark of Inevitability. We're going to debuff them since we're going through this exercise the right way right now. So bam, debuff. Go ahead and hit your finisher. Bam, hit it right there. And you got alacrity going. Go ahead and hit your builder. Burst, burst, burst. You're going rising waterfall and everything again. See all those crazy numbers. Finisher. Go ahead and pop your flurry if you want. If they're running away and you need a little bit of a ranged attack. Bam, bam, bam. And your burst is already back up. It's time to burst them once again. So as you can see, it's just a non-stop pain train that you're going to be doing. The only downside to this stuff is that it does not have a lot of abilities to get away. So if you start getting in danger, you might be in some trouble. That way you need that's why you need to save your fleet of foot so you can get away. So if you start Taking a lot of damage while you're in here in the heat, go ahead and pop your fleet of foot and take off running and try to get away. It doesn't have like a leap back or any of that awesome stuff that a lot of the Warlord heavy builds tend to have. So, yeah. Make sure that you're not getting in too much trouble or have a pocket healer or somebody that's going to heal you a decent amount at least. So, hope you enjoyed the build, guys. Uh... Make sure to hit the thumbs up button, the the like button down there if you found it uh, helpful and entertaining all in one. And hopefully you kill lots and lots of people with this build because I know I have. And if you want to see gameplay footage of this build in action, uh, I will have a link to it at the end of this video. So you can go watch that and 
yeah hope you guys enjoy and as usual my name is grim and i'll see you next time